are going to do our best to advise. We're gonna try our best to advise. How can you not be scared to come out? Ah! Somebody would like advice on how to accept yourself and your sexuality. Naked penis. I'm gay. We're back for part two. I am um, She's been doing that lately and I'm leaving it in because I hate it. She goes, hi, I'm Nestor. <laughs> no. That's that not, not it? How okay, I do it. show them how you do it. Hi, I'm Nestor. No, no, no. It goes like this. Hi. Wait, no. Hi, I'm Nestor. <laughs> she does it all so the time. So it starts with me makes going. me a little <laughs> nauseous, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Nestor makes an appearance now. Okay, <laughs> so that was a weird way to start this video, but it's actually an advice video on uh, for LGBTQ plus people. This is part two of Friday advice session. Welcome. I'm Allie, by the way. And I'm Sam, and Allie also goes by Nestor. <laughs> now, you sent in things that you need advice on, and we are going to do our best to advise. We're gonna try our best to advise. We'll try our best. We'll see what we can do. Yes. I mean, keep in mind that we have only our own experiences and life to go off of. We are not professionals in anything. No. So we are here for part two. If you want to see the first part of this video and some of the advice we gave, you can check out this video here. Found it. You couldn't find it? And see what we talked about there. All right, question uno. It's not questions. Though. Oh. How can you not be scared shitless to come out? Ah. Honestly, you can't. you're going to you're be. You're gonna just be sca so scared unless you're a superhuman who somehow has no fear and anxiety, then wow, I wish I was you. I know. Coming out, I think, is Whew. for a queer person, one of their biggest life events. Um, it's going to be terrifying. There's kind of no other way around it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure some people have really chill, relaxed coming out. They actually just, everyone knows they're gay from the second they're born, but yeah, that's not the case like, for a lot of people. Yeah, it was super, super scary. I was so anxious. Felt like there was bricks on me for like months and months and months like this. I was getting shorter and shorter. Like Nestor? Like and that's how Nestor came That's how Nestor was born. <laughs> no. Like once I did come out, I was like, so much lighter, so much freer. But you're just gonna be scared. You have to work through it and you will feel better later on, hopefully. Mm -hmm. It's just an experience that you'll learn from and grow from, even though at the time it doesn't feel like that. Yeah, at the time it feels pretty horrible. Yeah. But you're going to work through it and get out the other side and yeah. you can do this. Yes. No matter how scared you are, I am sure that you can do it. You can. You could practice though. I, I practiced. Who do you practice on? Just myself. Oh, you just say it in the mirror? Yeah, like what I was going to say, rehearse it. Would you just be like, hi, mom, I'm gay. No, God. I'm, I'm gay. Practice like different inflections? No, no, I just came up with the wording. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I like would ask advice from others. Just like tell people that I knew was easier first and then work on to the harder ones. Nice. Somebody would like advice on how to accept yourself and your sexuality. I am just quickly interrupting this advice video to thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community where millions of people come together to take thousands of different classes on all kinds of creative topics to get better at their craft or learn something new. They have classes on so many different topics, so there's something for everyone. They have classes on everything from photography to videography to social media marketing to music and music production, crafts, you can learn how to do illustrations or knit or crochet. I am actually in the middle of a class right now from Skillshare that goes perfectly with the advice we are about to give on how to accept yourself. I am currently taking the class Revolutionary Self-Care. Embrace, nurture, and grow your authentic self. It is a Skillshare original class taught by Chidira Eguru. Hope I'm saying that right. It is a class all about how you are worthwhile just the way you are, which is something that we truly believe, but it can be hard to put it into practice. 
So that's why this class is teaching you skills to build your self-acceptance, learn better communication, and to also learn self-respect skills. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so that means there are no ads for you to watch through. I am definitely someone who would be categorized as a lifelong learner. I always want to learn something new, but I'm also extremely busy and it can be hard to find time to learn something new. That's why Skillshare is perfect for me. It fits so easily into my busy schedule because most classes are less than 60 minutes. So I can usually find an hour here or there or break it up throughout the week to learn something new. And when you join, you can try one of Skillshare's new features, live classes. It lets you learn in real time with popular Skillshare teachers and you get to interact with other people in the community. The first 1,000 people to click the link down in our description are going to get a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership. So you can explore your creativity, you can learn something new, you can better yourself. It is just such a fun community. So let me know if you join and let me know down below if you already have what your favorite classes you've taken so I can take that one next. Okay, back to the advice video. Somebody would like advice on how to accept yourself and your sexuality. Oh, that one was hard for me, to be honest. That took me the longest time, was mm -hmm. accepting my own self. I don't know how I ended up coming to accept myself. I think it just took time. I think so too, for yeah. me. Yeah. Loving yourself and like all parts of yourself is a journey mm -hmm. and just know that it's okay. Like yeah. there's so many people out there who feel the same and there's nothing about you that you shouldn't accept. There's nothing about no. you at all. Not one single thing that is wrong. Nothing. So who Every you are is, is who you are. Yeah. And that's a wonderful thing. Everyone is unique. Everyone is different. Everyone has quirks and things are really good at and things are really bad at. And that's what makes you you. And the only person that you're with, really, from the very start of your life to the very end of your life is yourself. Oh so God. really though, so, so <laughs> no, you're with other people, but <laughs> you need to learn to love yourself because yeah. there's only one of you and you are with this body and this soul for your entire life. Wow. And I know it takes time. <laughs> is that too deep? Yeah. It might not feel like it all the time, but it is a wonderful body and a wonderful soul and you are a wonderful person and there's nothing wrong with you. What she said. <laughs> Somebody would like advice on going to their first pride. Oh, first. That's so exciting. That's super fun. Um, I do have some advice. Okay, what's your advice? One. Naked penis. That was going to be it. Be prepared to see naked bodies. Naked. I don't know why, but there, they come out. there is. Yes. And I wasn't prepared for that. I was also not prepared, and I was very shocked. And I think every Pride I've been to <laughs> since, I have seen a penis. Yeah, there's lots of penises. They're just out. Just know. Don't feel pressured, especially if you are a teenager, then you shouldn't do this at all. Mm -hmm. But don't feel pressured to drink. I think one yeah. thing about a lot of Pride events is they're very centered on alcohol. Yeah, like real big party stuff. Yeah, but and like, don't feel like you have to drink to have a good time. Me, personally, I don't think I really drank much at Prides we go to because it's usually in the day and it's hot and I like to be hydrated. And you're not a big and drinker. Like, I'm not a big okay. drinker, so I just get high on life. I hate you sometimes. I know, but it's true. And like the vibes and the music is so fun to me. Another piece of advice, you can wear absolutely anything, anything, anything you goes. want. You want to wear Hasties. your loudest rainbow dress? Go for you it. You can wear you literally just like nipple stickers Pasties? on yeah. your nipples. You can wear as little clothing or as much clothing as you want. Everything is go. Like you can yeah, do anything you want. Fun. It's Glitter, so fun. Everywhere, face paint everywhere. Oh, I miss anything it. you want, you can do it at Pride. So, it's so fun. know that going into your first Pride that yeah. you don't have to be like, oh, what do I wear? Okay, so I thought at my first Pride I should look like a lesbian. So people know that I'm not just an owl. I wore a snapback. I. Yeah, I have some pride photos of us here. Because Over the years, I'll show you. I wanted people to know that, yeah, I was part of the community. But now um, I'd be like, nope, I'm wearing whatever the heck I want. So Where you don't have to want? dress a certain way, you just be you. You can be the, the most you ever. Yeah. Another thing is, because I think the person that asked this is a teenager, there are often 
of Pride events that are just for teens. Yeah. So look into that. Look into your Pride schedule because there's a lot more to Pride than the just big the big party and the big parade. There's so many events that organizations typically put on for Pride and I'm mm -hmm. sure you'll find something, your speed, something you really like. If you feel this way, you're gonna be shocked at how often we hear this from people and how big of a question it is. Ready? Is it? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I feel like everything is in my head and I'm not really gay. Yes. Okay. How do I deal with that? I didn't re realize this until like someone asked this last year and I thought back and I was like, oh, I thought this for like years. Mm -hmm. I thought it for literally years. At the time I was living with roommates. One was a lesbian and they often had over like very big groups of lesbians and parties. And then my best friend came out as a lesbian and I was like, Am I doing this to fit in with the people around me? Like, am I not actually interested in women? Like, maybe I'm just making that up because of the people close to me right now, close to my heart, but close to proximity as well, mm -hmm. are all lesbians. That's why it took me extra long, like probably like six months of wondering mm -hmm. before I even voiced it to one person. And even then still, I was like, I might be making this up. And then I was extra confused because I was like, I don't know if I like just girls or just boys, like, mm -hmm. so I must be making it up. Yes, I still felt like that till we got married probably. Like I loved you, but I was like, what if I'm making it up? What if I'm making it up? Like it's so common where people are like, oh, well maybe, maybe I'm not actually, and I don't know why, there's probably lots of reasons that people I feel think, this way, but it's such a common thing. Yeah, and probably a big thing is like, just society having yeah. ingrained in us that that is not normal. It's not yeah. normal, it's out of the norm, it's odd, it's atypical. That's probably for me, I think, why. And then just the fact that I all of a sudden was surrounded by all these lesbians mm -hmm. and realistically, I was able to come out because I was surrounded by all of these lesbians because yeah. I didn't know it was okay before that. And it just so happened, what are the chances that I was living with these girls and my best friend came out? Like, mm -hmm. it worked in my favor, but it wasn't because of that that I decided I might be a lesbian now. Yeah. But I thought that, Yeah, I did. I feel like you're right, Ali. It's probably because heteronormativity, like a heterosexual lifestyle is so pushed on everyone from the day you're born. Yeah. That going outside of that, you're like, wait, you have to unlearn it. Yeah. And I, I still personally, I need to continue to unlearn. We will, we will see two women with children. And in my head, I, I can't possibly imagine that that's two moms. Like, I wouldn't think that. That would be us. And I still, like, I'm always working on unlearning, unlearning that. that ingrained thing. Like, oh, that they can't possibly be a couple. Yes. But, like, what? No. Yeah, it's just that's what society has taught you. That's so what long. I've been, it's like, to... pushed. That's what my brain knows. And it's terrible. I know that is really mm -hmm. bad. So I'm working on unlearning that still after how many years yeah. of being out. Someone would like advice on how to get people to stop asking if you're related to your partner. You could buy our We're Not Sisters shirt and wear it. Link it up here. <laughs> Link it there. <laughs> this... We have a shirt that says We're Not Sisters. So it's something that we've obviously struggled with a lot to have a shirt that says this, we're not sisters. We have no advice on this. No advice because it I happens. don't know why people ask us every day of our sisters. Every freaking day. Every single day. So sometimes they ask if I'm her mother. Yeah. You just have to come up with like a canned response that you like either just say no. I leave say it, no so straight face like, and I leave no room for like, I do not. This is how it goes. Are you sisters? No. You say, no. And I go. Ha <laughs> no, we get that all the time though. And I keep staring at them like this. That's my, I say that's exact words. Ha <laughs> ha, no, we get that all the time though. And I, and I say, no, uh, I'm the opposite. I am like, no, and it's none of your business and do not talk to me. That's also very in reflective of how we talk to strangers as well. I would be like, oh, hi, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. You'd be like, no, you wouldn't even acknowledge. You just look away. No. How can you know for sure if you like girls if you've never kissed a girl before? You just know. You do not have you don't to, have to kiss, them. kiss anyone to know your sexuality. If you know on the inside that you are whatever sexuality, that is enough. Yeah, I remember like I knew before I kissed a girl. Cause I could tell I liked, I knew what it felt like to like somebody and mm -hmm. like, like a person, but like, like them. And I yeah. was like, oh, dang, I like them. To take it a step further, you do not have to be intimate with either sex to also know 
your sexuality, people are going to be like, oh, well, how do you know? You just know. For instance, a straight yeah. man ever asks you, well, if you've never been with a man, how do you know you like, how do you know you don't like men? You can say that to them. You can say, if you've never been with a man, how, how do, do you, you know? know you're not gay? Yeah. And they're going to be like, oh, I just know. And be like, I just know. Yeah. You just know. You just know. But if you're questioning and you don't just know, it's okay to kiss people. Oh, yeah. Maybe kiss not in COVID. Maybe <laughs> not kissing them all in COVID. Yeah. We need to wear masks. <laughs> <laughs> but after COVID, this, once you're all vaxxed, kiss everyone and see how it makes you feel. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that either. Somebody said this is similar to one we've already done, but... When somebody would like to come out to buy to their heterosexual partner. They've been together for oh. four years and they feel like it's too late now. My advice is it's never too late. I feel like people think that sexuality is so set and like, this is how you feel and you always feel that way. But I feel like there's such a spectrum and things change and you have different life experiences that make you realize that you feel a certain way and that's okay. And it's okay for your sexuality to change over time. And if they yeah. really love you, they're going to accept all of you. And yeah. It's scary. Do you want to give advice as a bisexual? Well, I think I'd be really scared to do that. I see where they're coming from. That'd be very scary because, it, again, it's been four years. So I think it's important if you'd like to be honest with them and share your true self, especially like mm -hmm. if you're going to be married, maybe you want to tell them everything. Just tell yeah. them and just say, be honest, like, I didn't know how to tell you, so it's taking me four years. Yeah. yeah. There's a very common misconception also about bisexual people yeah. that they want both. That's not true. That is not true. Like, I'm not, like, go scouting the men. Like, I feel like the there's this think that. misconception that bisexual people are really promiscuous. No. They're going to be monogamous bisexual people, obviously. Yeah. And that's the end of this video. That's the end. Thanks for watching. Thanks Part so much two of this series. And there's still so many. So let us know if we should keep doing advice videos. Yes. Is that interesting for we you? We can answer some maybe on Instagram as well. Yes. So sounds good. All right. Thank you for watching. Thanks for and watching. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.